You're listening to the start of your NFL week. You're listening to the Opening Whistle Radio Show. Right here on MetsonRadio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Albert Albanese and Avi Shipman. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Opening Whistle Radio Show right here at MESNRadio.com. I'm your host, Albert Albanese. I am a juiced up Avi Shipman. <laughs> you are juiced up as always, man. Another huge week in NFL football. Uh, playoff, uh, the playoffs. I mean, another crazy, crazy week. A um, whole bunch of stuff going on. And of course, if you guys want to get involved in the show, you can give us a call. Our number is 609-910-0687. We'd love to hear from you guys and your opinions on the four huge playoff games that we had uh, this week. Some um, bigger than others. Yeah. Um, I mean, let, I mean, let, you know, let, let's face it. Uh, we're, we're, you know, a couple, you know, one major upset, one kind of upset, and two games, that, uh, one, one that we exactly what we predicted, and one game which was probably the greatest ending to a playoff game in the history of the NFL. I have to agree with that. That was... Albert, not only that, I didn't. Okay, I wasn't watching this live. Remember, I, I was working. Right. But I was following it on. I I, I wasn't watching. It, I, I was following it on ESPN. But then you know, I see at the end of the game, you know, it's over. But then I see update. Oh, Case Keenum touchdown pass to Stephon Diggs, sixty-one yards. I'm like, okay, first of all, there's no way that he threw a hail mary in the end zone. I'm like, he can't throw it that far. And I'm like, yeah. and then I'm like, I'm like trying to scramble out. What the hell happened? And somebody, I, I asked somebody what what happened. I'm like, was there a lateral? Like, what's going on here? And they told me what happened. I'm like. And I had to see it instantly. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? It was crazy. Yeah, uh, it was crazy. Honestly, um, so I actually, I didn't actually get to see it live either. Uh, unfortunately, so I was, at, you were working. I was actually on my way to go out to eat. Um, a buddy of mine and I were uh, going to go actually uh, to uh, back to visit my beautiful girlfriend uh, while she was waitressing, and I was hoping that I was going to catch the end of the game. Uh, but so we were both in restaurants. Y- well, no, I was in the car. So no, you're in the car. Okay. I had it on in the car, and of course, I, you know, I mean, look, I, I think everybody knows at this point I'm really rooting for the Vikings to make it to the Super Bowl. Um, so I was in the car pretty much, you know, the, the last half of the fourth quarter when um, when the Saints took the uh, took the lead. So I was a little bit bummed, and then I, you know, and then once I saw how much time was left, I was like, man, Keenum, he just doesn't have enough time and then all of a sudden i hear the westwood one radio call not the radio call the westwood one radio call and i'm in the car flipping out like it was like something the jets did you know i'm, I'm pounding the steering wheel screaming my face i was like oh my god this is the greatest thing i've ever and then of course we get to the restaurant i we sit down and they show the replay of it and when i saw the replay man i couldn't i couldn't believe couldn't it. believe it you watch it like a th- over and over and over and over and over again yeah so I, where are we gonna start we're we gonna dissect this this play here uh, because we, we should um we, before we do that, um, there is, and this is why. Look, we're doing a radio show right now, and this is why Avi and I are radio fans. Uh, we want to give you, if you guys haven't heard, a taste of what it sounded like when we heard Paul Allen's uh, make the call for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, their radio that, broadcast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. On their radio broadcast. Um, let, let's just take a listen to this because this, this. You I mean, would think it was regular fans talking. Yeah, yeah. This is this is just awesome. Shoot it up. Run out of bounds or run yep. it off the back of the end zone. I mean. Yep. Wow, just a big, big mistake. Uh, you just got to be able to, you got to take advantage of it when they do that kind of stuff. 10 seconds to go, 24-23 Saints. Vikings at their own 39, it's third down. Three receivers right, field and left. Marshawn Lattimore, 12 yards from Adam. Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side, caught by Diggs. Stay oh, my God, oh my God, oh my God. no hey. Listen to the excitement! Oh, no, in this I see, place. I see. You know, I don't oh see radio God. broadcaster there. I see two guys probably chest bumping right there, like their beers flying all over the place. You know, that it, it, it sounded like what, it sounded like me and you watching the game exactly. together, man. That's, that's that's what's great about sports, right there. Those moments like that, and I love you know, these are actual like they they want their team to win, obviously. You know, but it's it's unbelievable. That's everybody's reaction. But imagine, imagine calling how great it is to call that play right there. Oh my for god! For your team, I mean, it, how much fun is that? that, that it's got to be the most fun ever. Can't you I, see them I, like chest bumping right I, there? I, just I love I love the color commentator. He's like, stay in bounds. Stay in it's, bounds. It's yeah. fun. Oh my oh, god! Oh my god! god. <laughs> you that know? would be me. That would be me. Dude, I know. It was so great. I loved every second of it, man. Like I heard the call because you know, of course, you know, you you watch the um, you know, I, I was watching ESPN. I watch Good Morning Football every morning. I wake up, so I. I 
I, this morning that you know I was watching that. I was watching the NFL Network. I was watching everything I could. All the news sta- uh, the newscasts, and they played that once, and I was like, "That's it. That's the call. That's the call of the year." Absolutely, but you know what? You watch all the side. You watch all the angles. I I saw an angle from like the corner of the end zone, and you hear the sound of the crowd. It's yeah. unbelievable. You heard that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. You know? And it's and it's funny because you hear the you hear the second that he catches the ball. There's a little bit of an uproar. When Marcus yeah. Williams misses that tackle. Oh yeah. Oh my God! There's that so many things that came unglued. Talk about this play. But you know what? I was ready to come on here and you know not bash Case Keenum, but say he didn't listen. He didn't. This is his you know his first big game. He didn't show up. He wasn't, you know, what he did all year. But you know what? After that play, you saw his reaction. Watching his reaction after that play, like all of us. But you know oh what? God, How can you yeah. not feel good for that guy? I know. A career backup. You know, he's done everything this year for that team. You know, it's all worked for them. Maybe this is the team of destiny. You know, we, we talk about it. This team is this is a great team. But let's be honest. It was a lucky play. But you know of what? Course. Case Keenum put it in a perfect spot for Diggs. I don't know yeah. if he was. I don't know if he was. Did they have any timeouts? I don't know. They had no timeouts. I don't think they, no, I don't think they did. I don't know if he was going to go out of the bounds. Because if he did, they would have had a chance at a long field goal. But you know what? I don't think he was going to be able to get out of bounds from where he caught it, even if he get, did get tackled. Yeah, it no. was just everything happened perfectly. Well, the excuse that I, I was hearing, because a lot of people now talking about that Marcus Williams, missed, Marcus Williams missed tackle. And from what I understand, it's, he was trying to go low to keep Diggs in bounds and just, you know, he whiffed on everything the tackle. Everything happened man. perfectly. His body, yeah. Diggs' body was pre- position perfectly Marcus Williams had to go with the exact that exact angle to tackle him everything happened perfectly it, it was it was unbelievable yeah, the team of destiny I it mean, was it's, it's, unbelievable it's on. that play it, I mean it's on, I mean honestly you know how do you how do you not think that the, the Vikings are gonna are gonna beat the Eagles next week yeah it's hard not to think that but listen the Eagles will get into them but the Eagles are a very good team also with a very good defense well here here here's um here's, in, here's something interesting I guess we can you know kind of like we'll, we'll we can section off back to the Eagles in a little bit let's just um do a little bit of a quarterback comparison here we have the two you know career backups basically playing off against each other in the NFC championship game uh Case Keenum threw one touchdown he threw the touchdown to Stefan Dix it's the only touchdown Case Keenum threw that entire game Nick Foles didn't throw a touchdown in the Eagles win. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, this is going to be a defensive battle. It's going to be the exact opposite of what I expect between Patriots and Jaguars. Um, this is going to be, a, you know, two teams that are going to really get down and dirty and play some good defense. And, yeah. you know, it's it's up to whichever quarterback makes the, right. the better plays. And if you're, you're going to ask me who the better quarterback is right now, it's Case Keenum. Well, yeah, uh, listen, if you ask me right now, I'd say the Vikings are a better team than the Eagles. Slightly better. But the Eagles played, I think the Eagles played a better game last week than the Vikings did. You know, the Vikings, listen, they, that, that goal line stance at the end was pretty impressive. Their defense was legit. Absolutely. You know, the, the Falcons have had every chance to win that game. And they have no know, excuses. They had every chance to win. But and the, honestly, I mean, how do you not – I mean, look, I get it. Julio Jones fell down, and that's who you were going for. But how do you not blame Matt Ryan for saying, oh, he fell, let's look to another receiver? Right. No. Oh, my God. First of all, that I was a good throw. First of all, that was a good throw. It wasn't a bad throw, but you knew who it was going to. Exactly. No, I, and, I agree and with that. They showed the replay too. Jones' feet wouldn't even come back, come down inbounds. Yeah, I was t- and I was rooting for the Falcons. I didn't want to see the Eagles win. You I, know, I, mean, I know you didn't. I didn't want to see the Eagles yeah, win that game. Not. But you know, you listen. You have the two best defenses coming into this game. The, the, these two teams should be there. Let's let's be honest here. The Saints had a great year too. They should be there. But these two teams are the best, most consistent teams all year long. And the two best defenses, and that's how it should be in the NFL. You know, you got two. Yeah, Nick Foles versus Case Keenum. <laughs> who knows? I'm not. I'm not picking one of those guys. I'm. I'm going more with who. Who plays better defensive game? Because that's what it's going to come down to. I agree. You know. Um. I mean, but it's interesting. You look at Nick Foles' line. He was 23 for 30, 246 yards, no touchdowns. You know. I mean, that's the guy who's now leading a. You know, the Philadelphia Eagles into the playoffs, into the NFC Championship game against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Case Keenum didn't have a great game. You know, either. But. I feel like at this point, uh, first of all, we'd be singing a completely different tune if Carson Wentz was the quarterback for the Eagles. And I, I don't know if there is any team right now that would, is, would even be able to slow them down. Um, but Case Keenum right now is playing as good as a backup in the NFL could possibly play. He's playing, he's playing out of his mind. I he mean, yeah, really listen, is. he didn't, like I said, he didn't play great yesterday. He didn't play But it was great. against a solid right. Saints defense. It was against too. a solid, solid Saints defense. Just listen, in this game, you need some, some lucky breaks. But this oh, one yeah. was more than a lucky break. This was like this was actually a miracle. What happened? This uh, they're calling this it never the, happens. You never yeah. see this kind of play. They're ever. calling it the Minnesota miracle, seventh heaven. You see I mean, hail marys happen. 
We see laterals happen. That's what we thought happened. You don't see this happen. Not a, not a you know what, what was essentially what a 20, 20 yard completion maybe. Yeah. And you know Diggs just takes it takes it. To but the they house were going to the then, they were that was the play they were going to the sideline. But oh, Diggs yeah. made an unbelievable play. He made such a good adjustment. Let me tell you something. Stephon Diggs has been uh, underrated this entire season. Everybody's been talking about Adam Thielen and rightfully so. Adam Thielen has had a solid season in Minnesota. Kyle Rudolph has done really well. But uh, you know Stephon Diggs th- he was on my fantasy team. He did it. Some, he did some pretty good damage in that last game that we, you know that where I played you. He's been a solid player all year long. He's not getting enough credit. Stephon Diggs is one of the better receivers, and I think he kind. Just on that play, he showed what he's got. That takes a lot of, you know what, to do what he did. Because oh, that's yeah. risky too, man. He he had to make a quick reaction when he caught the ball, turned around. He has to make sure there's nobody there. He knows oh, he yeah. can outrun, and he's fast. Diggs. He is. Diggs is fast. That, but I mean, that's that's his Once Williams went that, if you watch it from, let's say, Case Keenum's angle, I'm sure Case Keenum saw, he's like, if he catches this ball, he's gone. He sees the defender coming in low, and there's nobody behind him. He's probably like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, imagine his reaction. I, I feel like Keenum probably made the completion, saw Diggs make the catch, and once Williams was on the floor, he was probably like, holy crap. <laughs> you know, that's it. It's um, just. Uh, wait, hold on. Actually, we got a phone call here. Uh, mm-hmm. let's, let's get that going first, if this wants to work. Where, of course, you know, I, I feel like every time, you know, last week was really good when it came to the phone calls. This yeah. week, you know. Wait, do we have. Do we have you there? Uh, hey, caller, uh, how are you? What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Mike. I'm calling from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Hey, Mike, how are you? Welcome to the show. Very good. How are you guys? Doing, doing good. We're doing good, Mike. What, what do you got for us this week? What do you want to talk about? So I wanted to talk about the two endings of the two games, the Falcons game and the Minnesota game. Sure. Um, one thing I wanted to say, like, you have first down and four downs to go for the Falcons. You have two of the best running backs in the NFL. You're telling me you don't run one play, maybe a toss sweep or something to give them a chance to run it in with their blocking scheme to get into the end zone? I completely, uh, completely that's... agree. I yeah, one, one time. Just yeah, at least a, one time. Give it a shot. Well, they were at the nine, right? Even still. You know, yeah, they they could have picked up some chunk right. yards. I, they threw that they threw that, they threw that you know weak pass to uh, Julio Jones you know, right. to, to get them. And closer. you know that the you know that the Eagles are playing pass defense there. Absolutely, they know Matt Ryan's going to throw the ball. I mean, why wouldn't you give it a shot? I completely agree with you, Mike. I I, I don't understand why they didn't go with the, at least trying one run. I just feel like it's going back to the Super Bowl where you know they didn't hand it off to Marshawn Lynch. Like you have it at <laughs> well, the two yard yeah, line, yeah. you have one of the best running backs. Give it to him and let him go. I completely agree. I uh, agree 100%. So that's number one. And then for the, for the Minnesota game, like, for what Stefan Diggs at the end of that game, um, Avi, I'm good friends with Avi, and he knows my two-year-old daughter. So I was watching the game with her, and I saw the play, and I jumped up out of my seat. My daughter started crying because she thought <laughs> something was, like, <laughs> happen to her dad because I was freaking out. And I'm thinking, like, how does this guy not step out of bounds? The coaches had to be telling him the whole time, go out of bounds when you catch that ball. So besides for the fact that he made a great play and actually made it to the end zone, I think we all have to focus on the most important part of that play is that he didn't go out of bounds. Because I actually think the time would have ran out, even if he made it out of bounds, the fact that he was smart enough and probably didn't listen to the coaches that were probably telling him, get out of bounds, get out of bounds, and that he actually looked up and saw that he could make it, I think that's the biggest part of the whole play. Honestly, in that play, I don't even think he was thinking about going out of bounds. Once he, once he turned around, he saw there was nobody there, and he was gone. He, he wasn't even thinking about going out of bounds at that play. It's so risky, but listen – I mean, it all worked yeah, out. That's yeah, a, I, such it, an it instinctual did. play. It did. It did work out. Well, you know, th- there was that big controversy at the end. There was still one second left uh, after Diggs uh, rushed it in. Oh, remember? was there? Yeah, <laughs> was yeah. There really? Because they, they had to kick the extra. They had to kick the right. extra point. All that kind of stuff. So, I mean, maybe there might have been enough time. So maybe Diggs just kind of thought, "Look, if somebody comes anywhere close to get you know out of me, I'll, I'll throw myself out of bounds and we can get the field. We can try to kick a field goal." Yeah, but he's not in that situation. I don't even. Think, I bet you, if you asked him today, if he remembers running down the field, I bet you he would say no. Yeah, probably not. I wouldn't even be thinking at that point. But Mike, I got to say, I mean, I, I, I was like, I, you know, I said earlier, I was in my car jumping up and down and flipping out because I heard the call. <laughs> I didn't even get to see that, see it. And once I saw it, man, I, I've, I've never ne- seen anything like never, that. It, never, ever. And it's never, never going to happen again. Maybe it never happened again that play. Uh, it's the first ever walk off touchdown <laughs> in NFL playoff history. Unbelievable. All right, one last thing before I go. Absolutely. My upset of the week 
the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to beat the Patriots, and I'll tell you why. They beat a top-notch offense in Pittsburgh with their quarterback, again, not having a great performance. Yeah, we're going to definitely get into that. Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> threw for four, five touchdowns, and they still beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm telling you, their defense is going to come after Brady. He's going to get sacked. He's going to get hurt. And I can see Jacksonville <laughs> pulling it off. Mike, uh, you know, we, we usually save our uh, predictions till the end of the show. But you know what? Screw it. I am 110% with you. And I am 110% not with you. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, you know, we're, we're going to get into this now. You know, Mike, thank you for your call. I appreciate it because you've actually now put me on a trajectory to make fun of Avi a little bit, and that makes me happy. All right. Oh, good nice. Job. I love that. Good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you very much for your call, man. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Take care. So, Avi, you know, we're going to talk, talk a little bit about predictions. Um, so, I went three for four this week. I think we you both did. lost on the uh, Falcons-Eagles game. But um, I remember you telling me that there was almost no chance that the Jags were going to beat the Steelers. <clears throat> That's true. And look what happened. They did. They beat them. <laughs> I, but you know what? Listen, y- they beat them. You're right. But they did it again like they've been doing all year. They've been winning despite their quarterback. Blake Bortles went 14 for 26 with 214 yards and, and a touchdown. Uh, it was a um, – and um, they had a defensive touchdown with Miles Jack. Leonard Fournette had 109 yards and three touchdowns. TJ Yeldon had a touchdown. Now, you hear that and you think, wow, they did pretty well. Wait, hold on. We have another call. All right. Hey, caller, what's up? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Ari from Linden. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Ari. What's going Very on? Much. I'm just calling. I have a prediction who oh. I think is going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> All right. Let's oh, hear let's it. hear it. Let's hear it. I think it's going to be the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. All right. Yeah, next year. Next year. You didn't say next year. Next year. Oh, yeah. no, because they're not going to win it next year either. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, we'll see. Well, I, I mean, hey, look, you know, after the, well, the last five games that your uh, 49ers had, I think, you know, uh, they might be in the running. That's right? their Super Bowl, what they did. Yeah, I think Garoppolo is going to stay undefeated his entire career. I, I, he might. He might. Kid's a monster. I've never seen anybody Wait, play I like don't, that. Wait, t- tell us, about, tell us yeah. what you thought about that play. The Diggs play. Which, which play are you talking about? The Vikings. The game yesterday. What did you think about that, that was play? Ridiculous. Well, I think it was it was a it was a poor defensive play because your whole I, your whole objective is to get the guy down whether he has the ball or not, and you got in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a bad tack. Marcus Williams. I don't know what he was what he was trying there on that tackle. I don't. I I mean, they keep saying that he was trying to get him to you know stay in bounds so that the clock would run. But I mean, man, it was just a, just a poor tackle. Just a bizarre play. Wait. Yeah, you just don't. Um, yeah, your whole idea is not to give him any shot of moving once he gets the ball. Absolutely. So, so what's your Super Bowl prediction? Who's going to the Super Bowl? What's my actual Super Bowl prediction? Who's going to the Super Bowl? I don't know. Probably the Patriots. Probably going to end up, I don't know, cheating somehow and winning. Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the NFL referees will make it to the Super Bowl again this year is what you're telling me? Pretty much. As they always <laughs> do. As they always do. You know, somebody told me, uh, he has these weird uh, thoughts about the NFL. He, his thought was last year in the Super Bowl, um, where Atlanta was killing them. Um, he his whole thought is everything comes from Vegas. So okay. he says that that people in Vegas are telling, uh, you know, the NFL officials to kind of tweak things or whoever in the NFL high up to tweak things to make sure people are are, are making their money. So that's his prediction of the world. Meaning the the Falcons should have run away with that game and they didn't. You know, people he he thinks people want to blame it on play calling, but he thinks there's more going on. I don't know if I believe that because if that's uncovered, then the whole Listen, NFL. What's the NFL? What's the NFL? What do they, they want more than anything? Money. That's all they care about. Yeah, yeah. agreed. But Money you know, and, and the Cowboys losing. Right, and the Cowboys <laughs> losing. Right, that's true. If they really care about the Cowboys losing, then they're doing a good job. Oh yeah, they are. man, they are. Oh, they did stack their schedule this year. Yeah, they did. <laughs> that's right. Wait. Yeah. Oh man! I mean, look, I don't know. I don't exactly know what to think about that. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, stuff like that, like Vegas being like the influence and stuff like that. I don't know how much I believe, really believe that. What I do believe, right. what I do believe though, is the fact that it just seems like um, calls are beneficially made to the Patriots all the time. We're gonna get into this a little bit later when we talk about the Titans game, but man, you know, it just, it just somehow, some way, it always seems like something benefits, uh, something benefits the, the Patriots. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe. No, I, yeah, it's it's kind of strange, but yeah. Well, maybe also because they have the best coach and the best quarterback. Even yeah. though they let's che- not go too far. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's let's be real here. That's that's what it is. Yeah, well, you know, you know, I I have this argument with with Avi a lot um, about the greatest quarterback, and it's like comparing the greatest in any other sport. There are different eras played. You know, if you bring in Joe Montana, 
in his time as a defensive back, you could touch the receiver the whole way down the line. You that know, is true. Uh, and there were no like there were no penalties if you glanced at a quarterback for more than five seconds. <laughs> you know, so you know, so so in Joe Montana's time, when you, you can get hit as hard as you want if you're a quarterback, and then yeah, trying was, to find an open receiver when they're being tugged the whole way is much different than Tom Brady has it. Yeah, of course. I mean, there was no such thing as the tuck rule back so, in that time. That's right. true. Well, even though the tuck rule, I think, was all made up just for that game. I, I agree, but, too. But it's still hard to yeah. win those three games in the playoffs to win the Super Bowl. Do it five times. It's not, right. not easy. You're right, but but weird things happen. And, and the Steelers, every time they play uh, up in Boston, they always say weird stuff happens. So, uh, I mean, you're right. Be playoffs or not? You just, uh, just admit you hate Tom Brady. Okay, it's fine. You can hate Tom Brady. That's fine. I hate Tom Brady. No, I don't hate Tom Brady. I just I think he's a great quarterback. I just think there's too much suspicion surrounding what goes on with Tom Brady and the Patriots. I completely agree. Yeah, that's true. But if they so, win again, the, I think yeah. You know, so statistically, in my mind, and not that I have any statistics in front of me, but over time, it seems like there's more around the Patriots than any other team at any given time. Uh, but none of it seems to to hit the papers that too often. Yeah. Well, I still so, I still think Tom Brady's the best of all eh. time. I haven't watched Joe Montana. I know he didn't throw a pick in the Super Bowl. He hasn't thrown an interception. But Yeah, listen, I know, but Tom, I you saying, can't deny the greatness. You can't deny the greatness. Listen, I hate Tom you're Brady. You're a Cowboys fan, your intelligence is below average. It's okay. <laughs> we understand. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Remember, remember last time yeah. your team right. hasn't won a Super Bowl yeah. longer than than my team. So all right, what do you say? Your team hasn't won a Super Bowl in longer than my team. That's all right. My team hasn't won a Super Bowl longer yeah. than both of your teams probably combined. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's a good uh, point. You go. you could be yeah, a Jets fan. You it could be worse. You could be a Jets fan. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's a very good point. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you again right. for your call. As usual, you know yeah, we love no it problem. every week, and you know just keep calling and making fun of Avi. It's the highlight of my night every night. Yeah, yes. I hear it every day. Yes, my prerogative. I hear okay. it every day. Right. Well, I yes, appreciate every it. Night. All right, you too. Yeah. Right. I was waiting for him to bash <laughs> the Cowboys. Um, so, can, you know, look, look, he brought up an interesting point, though. Um, can we talk a little bit about that Patriots-Titans uh, game? No, it, it was, <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, and, and when I say a little bit, it's going to be a very little bit because it, there's not much to talk about. Except for the fact of what was with that phantom one second on the clock there for the Patriots? You see that with uh, Amendola made. Amendola. I actually, I actually did not see that. Okay, so there was um, there was a call made uh, where, there, you know, um, like one of the receivers had to get down in a certain amount of time, and there was one second left on the clock. And man, that one second stayed on there for a really <laughs> long time. You're telling me horrible clock management or whatever issues with referees going on in the NFL? I could not, I couldn't in, believe it. In Gillette too. In Gillette, yeah. At what, at what point of the game was this? Uh, I believe this was like uh, midway through. This was, it, it was, you know, when the, it didn't affect when the, game was the outcome decently of the game, close. you're telling me. I mean, look, nothing's going to really <laughs> affect the outcome of the right, game. I mean, right. when you have Tom Brady going 35 for 53, throwing for 337 yards and three touchdowns. Which we expected. Yeah, I mean. You didn't give the Titans a chance in this and, game. And, I mean, let's face it. Look, at it, he threw to James White, to Gronk, to Bol- uh, Bolden and uh, White. Both had uh, rushing touchdowns. He threw to Hogan in the end zone. It's not even like he the guy just throws to, like, Brandon Cooks and that's it. He's g- just... The, he spreads the ball around. Amendola gets it. You know James White. James White. Uh, Deion Lewis. Lewis yeah, it, it's crazy. You know, and look, I hate Tom Brady with a passion. You know that. I'll say it every single time I'm on this show how much I hate Tom Brady. But damn, you know, even though I, I really, honestly do believe that the Patriots get the benefit of the doubt with every single call and every game. There's always something controversial. Always there's something controversial with the Patriots. As much as that is true, you can't deny the fact that Tom Brady. Is I mean he, the guy's magic. He really is, and I hate him. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to think that, but it's true. And I said it last week. Remember, remember we talked about what was going on behind the scenes with them, with Belichick and Brady and Kraft. And we said, and I said, if any team could get over that hump, it's them. And everybody's forgetting about that now. Belichick says, "Oh, he's going to be back." It, it didn't seem like it affected them at all. And let no. me let me tell you something. They go from they go from playing Marcus Mariota to Blake Bortles. I know Mar- that. I know. I know that the Titans are not as good as the Jaguars. But, I mean, I, I don't uh, – listen, you said it would be much bigger upset if the, if the Jaguars beat the uh, Patriots and the Steelers. They would have been a much bigger upset. Oh, I agree. Steelers' defense is, it was questionable this whole year. Oh, I agree. Not that good. I agree. I agree 100%. They got off always also a 21 nothing lead. They got off to a huge start. Do you see them going up 21 nothing in Gillette this week? Do I you mean, see that happening? Cra- look, in all honesty, how are the, how in all honesty are, look at the end of that play of the Minnesota game. Crazy things have happened, man. I, I don't know. That's true. That's true. But – do you, if you think that the Vikings are the team of destiny, do you think the Jaguars are also? 
I mean, maybe in the AFC. I mean, I, 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 I look. I picked the ja- <laughs> I picked the Jaguars specifically because I actually thought I thought this was gonna this game was gonna end like sixteen fourteen. You know, I I thought it was going to be a really low-scoring game. I picked the Jags because I really honestly and truthfully believed that their defense was so superior that Ben Roethlisberger was rattled, that that Miles Garrett was going to be, you know, just like, uh, Miles Jack, I'm sorry, was just going to be, you know, like a a ball hawk, which he was. You know, he scores the touchdown and everything. I mean, I I really thought that 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 defense was just going to mess up Roethlisberger the entire time, and it didn't even, it wasn't even that. No. uh, Their offense matched them. I don't know, man. I, I just, I really honestly believe that, it's teams like the the Vikings and the Jaguars that this year have stepped up when they've needed to every single time. I'm telling you now, I'm a, Blake Bortles needs to have a great game for them to beat the Patriots. They're not going to do this again. They're not going to. They Bill Belichick is uh, is the best coach, the smartest coach for a reason. What is he going to do? He's going to take away that running game. He's going to make Blake Bortles beat him. I, I, am I, I wrong? I am 100 percent with you. The mo for uh, he is not going to let no, Leonard Fournette. Yeah. He's not going to let these guys run all over them. He, he's not going to let Blake Bortles. Let, he's going to let Blake Bortles run for 90 yards. Let him run. Yeah, who cares? He is going to make Blake Bortles uh, beat them. Yeah, and without you know, a doubt. And I, I, I feel like he's going to pressure him too. He's going to be all over him. And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I mean, look, they're going to take away Fournette. He's their best. He's their best player, and that's going to be it. It's going to have to be Blake and Bortles. That, and that's why I don't see it happening. I don't see them beating them in Gillette. I, I don't see it happening. I don't see it. I, there's nothing even I have to say about this. It, this would be a monstrous upset if they can win in Pittsburgh and then win in New England. Blake but, Bortles. Imagine that story. Yeah. Imagine that story, man. That's what I want. And I even want if Blake story. Bortles wins the Super Bowl, he's not going to be the quarterback next year. Probably not. It's unbelievable. I, I, I think the magic ends. Listen, Tom Coughlin's done a great job coaching this team because I don't consider Doug Marone their coach. I don't know. I just feel like Tom Coughlin put together this whole thing. No, I, I kind of feel Doug like Marone. You got to give him credit. Yeah, no, no. He's he's done a good job, but I think Coughlin really, uh, you know. But remember, Coughlin also. Cough. Oh. Wait, hold on. We got we have another phone call. Hold on one second. We'll get back to Tom Coughlin in a second. Hey, caller, what's up? What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Phil from Springfield. How you doing, guys? Hey, Hello. what's going on? All right. A little off topic. Who's going to be the next Giants coach? Who do you guys think? Well, that's actually interesting. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, there's a really big okay. rumor that uh, Pat Shermer from the uh, Minnesota Vikings is actually going to be the head coach for the Giants. Now, um, we heard a lot of interest uh, from the Giants' end on – uh, you know Josh McDaniels and Matt Patricia from the Patriots, but it looks like uh, they're locked up in other places, and it looks like Pat Shermer is the uh, lead candidate right now for the Giants. Okay, very good. I don't like it. Hey guys, I, I got a I got a coaching trade for you. Okay, how's Marvin Marvin Lewis for Andy Reid? Straight up coaching trade. What do you think? I don't think it can hurt either team, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, th- I think I think if Andy Reid can't get things done in uh, in uh, what's it called? I don't think anybody, in Cincinnati. I don't think anybody okay. can. Right. Okay. So I know you guys are big Marvin Lewis bashers. Uh, well, okay. Actually, that's not, that's that's not essentially true. Avi is the biggest Marvin Lewis fan in football. <laughs> I am. All right. Okay. <laughs> coach of all time. All right, guys. Have a good show. All right. Thanks for calling. Okay. So on that call, listen, honestly, I think Marvin – okay, back to Pat Shermer for a second. Yeah, yeah, Pat sure, Shermer is sure. not the right hire. No, I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I'm not a big believer in him. Yes, these guys – yeah, he coached uh, – listen, let's be honest here. The Vikings were winning because of their defense. Listen, no disrespect to Case Keenum. They play he, – he had every every situation happen for him. He had he has everything he needs to win. But you think Pat Shermer – remember he went to the to the Browns? He failed there. But he went to the Browns. That's right. But how did the Giants pick this guy, Pat Shermer? Honestly, do you think this is the right hire? This is honestly, I feel like this is this not the same as McAdoo, but this is like kind of similar. Pat Shermer, come on. I actually, I, I Marvin like, Lewis at least. I would at least go with Marvin Lewis with all that experience. I would pick him over. I, over Shermer. I actually, I don't dislike Shermer just for the simple reason that. I have a feeling that he actually might be uh, able to deal with all those young wide receivers and you know deal with the with the egos and stuff in that locker room. I don't know much about him, honestly. I don't know much about the guy. Uh, from what I've what I've seen, he looks pretty like he's kind of like a hard nosed kind of a guy. And, if, and you know what? That's what they need in New York, man. You, you know, if you're going to keep Odell in New York, you have to have someone who's going to be able to contain Odell. And you know what? Maybe he can do it. Maybe that's what you know what brought him to it. Because in all honesty, on paper, I agree with you. I don't think he's the right choice. Yeah. There's got to be something to the Giants seeing him other than. The Vikings having a monster year this year because the the Vikings have had a monster year for the past two or three seasons. Well, if they didn't have they just a mon- had bad luck. Well, if, I don't know. This year really helped him out. Let's let's be honest. 
Oh, absolutely. Bring you know having a backup quarterback become you know you know bring into the uh, the NFC Championship. I mean that's as an offensive coordinator, isn't that kind of like you know? Holy crap! I did the best job I possibly could. Yeah, I guess we'll I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know how he does. I can't bash him so much, but I just don't think this is the right hire for the Giants. They need a guy. I don't I don't know if he's a disciplinarian like Coughlin was. But I hope so. But I don't know. I hope not. I hope they're terrible. I hope he fails because I hate the Giants. But yeah. Oh, I mean, so, <laughs> so do I. But objectively, for for the franchise, for the franchise. You know? All right, yeah, we don't know. know. We don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll um, see. But well, there's a lot of other huge rumors about uh, NFL coaches. I mean, we'll get into that a little bit before we go. We get delve back into the playoffs a little bit here. Um, so Josh McDaniels is linked to being the head coach of the uh, Colts. What do you think about that? I like it. I mean, listen, he he did not do a good job with the Broncos that that did not work out no, drafting Tebow in the first round oh boy didn't work out at the end of the day but we'll see what he can I mean we know luck is a great quarterback when he's healthy if he plays but we again. don't know what what, what he, what's going to be with him uh, I agree I agree you know we don't even know if he's 100% confirmed to come back I this mean, season let's be honest McDaniel I mean has is Brady's success linked to McDaniel's like is McDaniel's that great of an offensive mind I think he I is a great offensive coordinator sure but he's also been with the best quarterback, best coach watching him behind his back. I agree. I mean, the only thing you can think of is you can hope that um, whatever Belichick does, whatever his magic is, whatever magic he works, is has rubbed off on Josh McDaniels for the Colts. Because at this point, that's the only thing you can think you know, I mean, like, what, else is, what, what else is there? But he 100% deserves it. A job, oh, I agree. again, coaching in the NFL. But let's go back to we were talking about Tom Coughlin. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Tom Coughlin, I mean – his first year, remember the expansion, their first year as an expansion team, the Jaguars, they made the AFC Championship game. Yes, they did. That's his first year. And this, I believe, is his first year with the team? Yeah. First year with the team. And they're going to the AFC Championship. Uh, I think it's going to be the same result. Um, but, listen, he's got to win executive of the year, first of all. Oh, no, I agree. Without a doubt. It's just, this game is so, this game is tough. This game is, is a weird game. We're seeing the Jaguars in the AFC Championship game. You know, I, I, let's let's think of it this way. Um, you know, at, at the beginning of the year, uh, the teams that were named to be you know in this position right now, you know, you had Patriots, Falcons, Steelers, uh, Raiders were you know were heavily talked about um, this year. Um, of course, you know, Seahawks are always thrown around. The Panthers are always thrown around. We're not seeing any. You know, we're only seeing one of those teams. That's it. We're yeah. seeing one. I mean, nobody knew the Eagles were going to have the, uh, the the season that they had. They're having a monster season. Nobody knew right. that the Vikings were going to have the season that they had. They're having just you know the, a great season. And I, nobody would have ever predicted what the Jaguars are doing. No, but, the, you know, the, maybe it's not good for the ratings for the NFL, but this is good, you know, <coughs> this is for the parity. This is good for the NFL. This is, this is good for the NFL, in my opinion. I think so. You need these teams besides the regular teams coming in. These are the, the new crop. You, know, you want to see some new teams once in a while. Listen, honestly, I don't want to see the Jaguars in the Super Bowl. Do you? I do. You do. Okay. You want to see them in the Super Bowl. I do. You want? I want to see the Vikings. You know, play at home in the Super Bowl. I want to. But see they that deserve too. to be there. You know, the Jaguars definitely deserve to be. The Jaguars have been amazing this year. I, I want to see the Jaguars in the Super Bowl because I've never seen the Jaguars in the Super Bowl. I want to see something. I want to witness something for the first time with everybody else. I want to see it for the first time. The, the Jaguars have never been in a Super Bowl. I want to see it. And you know what? I hate to say it. If the Eagles make the goddamn Super Bowl, I kind of almost want to see the Eagles win just to say that I actually saw it. Eagles, actually, I Eagles, take that back. I don't really know. If Eagles I really Jaguars want to would be. Uh, oh, that, that's be, atrocious. That'd be brutal. Uh, here's here's my thing. It's actually you know what? It's actually not even that bad. It's not even that bad of a game. I mean, on paper, it's, it's a not. Bad game. It's really not. It, it's, it's probably be entertaining. <laughs> the the problem with that is you know is the narrative. The narrative has been spun this entire postseason that the Vikings are gonna you know could get you know to play the Super Bowl in their own stadium. And I mean, imagine having that narrative ruined by the Eagles this year, man. That, that sucks. Yeah, remember, remember, we were talking about with the Vikings. We were talking about this weeks ago. We said the Vikings need to win. They're going to get a bye. They need to win yep. two games That's to right. get to the Super Bowl, and they're one game away. Say, we said, I said, all the motivation in the world. Yeah, they have all the motivation Everything. in the world, especially after what happened last week. Okay, they got to take advantage of that miracle that they got last week. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. If they don't come off and uh, start hot. I mean, they have to. I really feel like the Eagles are going to get it. I mean, if, I, I, I feel like if the Vikings are on offense first, man, the Vikings are going to are gonna come out and destroy 
Not only that, I can see the Vikings just dominating this game. Can't I think you? so, too. Can't you see I them so dominating too. this game? Yeah. Uh, real quick before I forget, um, guys, if you want to call in, like we've had a couple of great callers so far, the number is 609-910-0687. Call in. Give us your Super Bowl prediction. But go ahead, Avi. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I want to see... I want to see the Patriots and the Vikings. I think it would be an amazing, amazing game. I, I don't want to see that because I don't <laughs> want to know that the Vikings are going to lose. Because <laughs> Brady's never lost to anybody in the Super Bowl besides for the Giants. And it's, and it's not even that. You know, when you have the entire NFL officiating crew on your side. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know, it's hard to lose. But you want to see the Jaguars. I, I don't really want to see the Jaguars. I do. I really do, For man. some sick reason, I still want to see the Patriots in. I don't want to see them win. But I want to see them. I'm tired unless they're, playing, of it. unless they're playing the Eagles. I'm tired of it. Here's my thing. You know, take away the hatred that I have for the New England Patriots. I am a diehard Jets fan. We all know this. You know, all know I hate the, the, the Patriots. Man, I'm sick of it. I wanted to see the Jags beat the, the Steelers because I didn't want to see. I, I didn't want it to be it, it, the choice to be the Steelers or the Patriots because I'm tired of it. I'm so glad that, you know, I, I mean, I wanted to see the Falcons win. But you know what? To a point, I was a little bit happy that they were out because I just didn't want to see uh, you know the Falcons make it again. Right. I, I'm just, I'm tired of seeing the narrative being spun every year. It just seems like you know for the past what, what the past like, past 10, like years, 10, 12 years. You see the Patriots, the, Patriots are play- the Steelers, or whatever team that Peyton Manning's playing for. Right. But you. But we also know is that the Patriots are going to be at home. They're going to have a bye. They're going to have that one seed. We know that. Yeah. So. It, it, he has to go through Marcus Mariota, then Blake Bortles. He has to look at it that way, Tom Brady. What did he, you know? Oh, man. And, and then, you know what? You know what the worst thing is? He makes it to the Super Bowl. He, he either plays Case Keenum or Nick Foles. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Can you have, I mean, seriously, if you are the NFL, can you have written an easier path for the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl? No. It's, not it's even disgusting. Close. Not even close. It's actually, like, absolutely disgusting. They either, they play... A third year, what? <laughs> what, 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 what Mario is in his third year, right? Yeah. So they play a third year quarterback. No, I think he's a, yeah, third or fourth year. And so they play a third year quarterback in the first round. In the second round, they play a second year quarterback who's played terrible the entire season. <laughs> and in the Super Bowl, they either they play a backup quarterback. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> you look at Tom Brady; he's got his handful of rings, and then you got Blake Bortles, Nick Foles, and Case Keenum <laughs> over there. The other three quarterbacks. Just sitting there going, why am I here? Exactly. How did I get here? Exactly. And Brady's just sitting there on his couch going, <laughs> Yeah, he probably I've is. I've been there before. He probably is. But the, the look you get, from what I saw from the Patriots last week, the dominance you saw from them, they were down 7 nothing even. How do you pick? How do you go against them th- this coming week? How do you go against them? They're, I mean, you have to think that their defense has to play lights out. That's it. Their defense the has, to play, has to play lights they, out. Yeah. Brady has to play lights out. Brady has to have at least two turnovers. Two. The, and, and and not only that, you're not going to get another 45 yard. Because uh, I believe they're the going to they're going to move the ball. Look what the Steelers did. They're going to move the ball. They're going to move the ball. Listen, they've been there so many times. They're smarter than them. They've been there so many times. I mean, everybody on that coaching staff has been there. Listen, so many we know times. that the Jaguars are a team on the rise for sure. You know, without Blake, take away Blake Bortles. We don't we don't count him. Imagine that team with a, I mean with a quarterback. Let me ask you a question: With a competent quarterback, do you really think that the you, would you have given the Jags a chance in this game? Because I can Absolutely. see it right now. Yes. You don't you don't even give them a chance. I right would now. have been. It would have been. Yes, it would have been a game. I don't think it would have been close. Yes, for sure. I don't think it would have. Been, they definitely won in New England. Absolutely not. But I think the Patriots are going to win this game by ten points, seven to ten points. I really do. You know, I, I, feel like I, I can't bet against Brady. I can't bet against him. When you, how can you bet against him? I who mean, has Brady lost to in the playoffs in his career? Peyton Manning. Uh, who else has he lost to? The, uh, he lost to... To Eli. In the playoffs? In the playoffs. He, he lost to Mark Sanchez. He lost to Mark Sanchez. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's right. He lost to Mark Sanchez. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. But come on. No, no. I, I hear what you're saying. I can't I bet against saying. Brady. I can't bet against him. And, and, I cannot. And you would be stupid, too, because it's proven been proven over and over again that Tom Brady is the most proficient quarterback in, you know, maybe in NFL history. And I hate to admit it because, like I said, I am a diehard Jets fan. It kills me to admit it. But it's true. And he's a, he's a, he's a killer. Look at, the guy's, look at the guy's eyes. Look at how he plays. He's a wuss. You think, I mean, they're, you think he's, they're going to go in there? And they're going to be like, oh, we're losing to this the Jaguars coming into our place to go to the Super Bowl again? You don't think Tom Brady wants another Super Bowl, number six? Of Are you course kidding he me? Does. You don't think he wants of to have the most rings of all time? You Absolutely. Think Belichick wants another one? You think that? Seriously. This uh, is what the Patriots do. Uh, I do have to say, um, did, you, did you see the uh, press conference when um, John Gruden got introduced? And they showed, the, they showed the game with the tuck rule. And the first thing he walked up and said was, 
Brady definitely didn't, uh, fumbled that ball. Yeah. Well, I we all know. We all know. That Listen, was great. That's why I was talking about that recently. That play changed history. That play changed yeah. history. But, you know, in, in, in all honesty, it didn't change history for the better. I don't think it did. I think we've gotten we've gotten to a, a point now, and I get it. Uh, the NFL and the NFL quarterbacks need to be protected. I completely agree. But man, this game just feels like sometimes when it comes to a quarterback, if the hit it looks anywhere near questionable, it's become the softest. You know, it's the softest thing in the world. It's uh, no, there's a flag, right. especially on somebody like Brady. Right, guy, and the guy looks for a flag every time he gets hit. He gets up and looks at it, looks for a referee every time. Yeah, well, and you know what? I'm sorry. I don't like seeing that. I don't like seeing that out of any quarterback. If I was, if I was a Jet, the Jets and Tom Brady was my quarterback, I would be in love with Tom Brady. But I would yeah. hate the fact that he did that because you know every what every time you're an NFL football player, you have pads on, you have a helmet on, you have those things on for a reason. You're gonna be hit. You're gonna be taken down. These things are gonna happen. You can't look for a flag every single time you get taken to the ground. I agree with you, Albert. But this is the way sports is. Sports is in basketball and football. The superstars get superstar treatment. That's just how it works. That's how it goes. LeBron James cries after every every after why, why, every like, call. Like, like the other play, what was that? Was that yesterday or the day before where LeBron got beat on a on a play and blamed another player? Like he was yeah. standing next to him. Like what the hell was that all about? This, I mean, this is just how it works. All the great players of all time will complain at every play. Michael Jordan did it. Kobe Bryant did it. All the players do it. All right. I hate seeing it, man. I do. I and really it's true. Do. They probably do protect. They do protect Brady. All right. They do. But. Listen, you know, and, and that's the thing. Oh, and I, I could have sworn, and I'm not sure if this is true or not. It just looked it. I could have sworn that Brady got knocked down, and the referee actually went over to help him up. I <laughs> swear to you, Avi, I'm not even kidding. I'm sure it's happened. I watched. I was watching I'm it. Sure. I swear it looked like he looked. He, the referee walked over to help him up. I swear. And it just, you know, and I know that probably, you know, at, at that point he probably would have did that if that was, you know. If it was, uh, what's his name on the floor too? If it was Mariota, maybe he would have done the same thing. But it just always looks like, man, every time that there's a decision, Brady is in, you know, is in the middle. It's like three referees and Tom Brady. I, you know I'm, what I mean? I, I'm just, sure. It, it, it just, it, it, everything points right. to the fact that they are just given preferential treatment. But if I'm Tom Brady this week, listen, I got to be worried about this pass rush coming at him. They got some, they got some oh, mean guys, absolutely coming at him, and he's gonna, he's gonna want some, want some calls. And I, I see it happening a lot. They're gonna rely on that screen game. With uh, James White, they're gonna they're oh, gonna yeah. rely on that. Maybe they're gonna hit one big play, but that, that's how they're gonna go about the game. You know, I mean, you have Amendola, you have James White, you have Dion. If you're Lewis. the defense for the Jaguars, how do you? What, what's your game plan for this game? Um, get at Tom. Brady. Who do you stop? You you get, you get at, Tom at Tom Brady. Brady. That's you how you, Tom that's Brady. how you beat him. That's how you beat him. That's how you beat you him. You get at Tom that's Brady. That's what the Giants did in the Super Bowls. You need you need to make you need make Tom Brady the, the one weakness Tom Brady has because he's not mobile. When he feels when he hears footsteps, Tom Brady freezes. Right. And if you hit make him, him run outside the pocket, you yeah. got to make him move. If you hit him three or four times early in that game, you shake him up a little bit. You know what? Uh, in all honesty, if I'm if I'm the Jaguars, I'm the coaching staff. Take two take two or three penalties early in the game. I'll take them. But if you hit Brady hard yeah. on those three, uh, even when you get those penalties on those three games, I don't care. You got to face match the guy in front of you to get him out of your way so you can go after Brady. Do it. Hit Brady. Hit him hard. Hit him yeah. often. Hit him fast. And that's how you get Tom Brady off his game. They're going to try to run the ball. Jacksonville will stuff that. It will, will stuff the box. Brady, it's going to be tough for Brady to beat him. And you know what? They've got a good set of corners. They got a great defense. That's how you beat Tom Brady, and that's the only way I see the Jaguars having a chance. Look, I talk a big game. I do think I, my prediction is going to be is going to be that the Jaguars beat the Patriots. I feel like every time I pick the Jaguars, they've won. Maybe I'm doing something right, so I'm going to go with it. And we'll get into our picks in a couple of minutes. But I really, honestly believe that if the Jaguars really do want to win in you know in real life, you know, like you know, taking out like any personal animosity I have towards anything. They have to get after Tom Brady. They have to get after Tom Brady. Marquise Lee needs to have a big game. Alan Hearns need to have, needs to have a big game. And they need to figure out how to get Yeldon and Fournette involved in the offense to make sure that they can get them uh, th that, that running game working at least enough so that you know they can have Blake Bortles you know, throw a couple of uh, 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 play-action passes and try to see if they can make something work on offense. I really believe that the Jaguars are going to have to play a perfect game to beat them. They're I gonna, don't disagree. And it's going to say a lot. I want to see the first few possessions of this game for the Patriots offensively. See what the defense is doing. See what what they're what they're going to do. If they're going to if they're going to pressure him right away. If they're going to back off. They're going to you know. I want to see the game plan coming on. But <sighs> Albert, it's the Patriots, man. I know. It's just like you want to see them lose every year, but I know they're the, there. The, the, the evil dynasty. It's crazy. It's true. They maybe they just gotta you know move divisions. You know their their divisions too easy. That's why they that's why every year that's six wins, five or six wins easy every year. Yeah, I know from the division alone. I know. You um, know, you gotta change it up. 
Well, you know what? Next year it's going to be a, you know, a little bit of a different look for the Patriots. They're, it doesn't look like they're going to have uh, Josh McDaniels. And uh, Matt Patricia's being linked to the, uh, to the Lions. You know, I mean, he's done a good job with the defense this year. They were awful the first two, two or three games. He really turned it around. They're playing good defense. Yeah, but now. you know what? You're still going to have Bill Belichick. I know. I know. <laughs> Most likely. Uh, and listen, coordinators have gone through there, but all of them really have succeeded. Well, because you're, you know, so yeah, we don't really know what the, I mean, I think Belichick's the real yeah. the genius in the whole group. I agree. He makes everything go. Um, you have any prediction? And just real quick before we, you know, we close out the show with doing our, our, our predictions and talking, you know, about everything else. Um, uh, uh, just to mention it, it looks like Ken Norton Jr. might be the uh, defensive coordinator in Seattle. I mean, that's a decent pickup. I, I mean, Ken, you know, Ken Norton Jr. has done pretty done a pretty good job. Uh, well, they, they can't get any worse. They can't the, get any their worse. Their defense can't get any worse. Yeah, so. and, they, and, they, and they lost a lot of guys last year uh, to injury, to free agency. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, but where do you see Malarkey? Now, I mean, you know, he he was announced that you know after they won that playoff game that he was going to return as the coach, right. and now all of a sudden they can't reach a deal. I'm not so surprised by this. Neither am I. I don't think he's a great head coach. Do you think he gets another shot somewhere? I think he'll be a. I think he's an offensive line coach. I think that's where he made he had success. He was with the Steelers, I think, for a while. You don't see him getting a head coaching job after he he brought a team to the playoffs and winning the, he might. the first round. Yeah, he might. Sure, what he did with the Titans this year, absolutely. But he's not. The, the Titans need a guy that can coach Mariota. You know, I agree. He needs. He needs. I agree. He needs a, a good quarterback. A coach. good quarterback yeah, coach. I, I That's what they're going to go for next. People forget that the Titans need a coach. Also, I don't know who's on the list there. I mean, you know, there's there, there's a whole bunch of guys that are available. So I right. guess we'll see. But Malarkey, yeah, sure, he, he can he can be a head coach somewhere. But you know, I don't know where he's going to go. I'm, I'm waiting to see who gambles on uh, Arizona. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm waiting to see who really get, make, takes the gamble and brings in Jack Del Rio. Because I mean, Jack Del Rio, right? That's good. There you go. That, he absolutely that get a head coaching a, job, and that would be a great pickup, I think, for the Titans. I agree with you. Yeah, I, I, he's, that's true. The guy's unpredictable. He's gonna he's gonna make plays. He's gonna you know fake punts, all that good kind of stuff. You know, they call him the Riverboat Gambler for a reason. And you know, I mean, I love I love Jack Del Rio. I was I was actually upset seeing him getting taken out of uh, right. You know, but I mean, when, when the Raiders have a chance to get John Gruden, they're gonna take it. Of course, we spoke about that last week. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so it's prediction time, Avi. Um, let's let, let's run through it. I mean, we and kinda, before make our. I mean, we want to do this before or after. We have to play that sound again of the Vikings last play before we end the show. Yeah, well, because well, well, I want to end the end the, end well, the show on a high we'll note. End, we'll end the show with that. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. So we kind of covered this a little bit. Uh, I said that I think that the Jaguars, you know, get after Brady enough. I think I know where you're going. Offense. You think I think you know where I'm going. Uh, you know, I think the Jaguars can win. I'm going to say Jaguars, you know, um, to really, really try to put a, put a, you know, a, put a little bit of a, something on it. 27, 24 Jaguars, 27, 24 Jaguars. I'm yep. going, I'm going 34, 27 Patriots. I can see that happening too. I mean, I really, can. <laughs> I really can. I mean, I don't, yeah. don't want to look, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I get it. I, I'm the host of a show. I need to not be, you know, to, uh. You know, too uh, par- uh, partial to anything else, and my hatred shouldn't get in the way. But um, you know, I-, I can I can see I can see it going both ways. I really can. But I I, I like twenty seven twenty four. I think it- I think it's solid. I-, I really do believe that the Jaguars can pull it off. And maybe it's wishful thinking. Um, I guess we'll see. Well, I've been great at making predictions so far in the playoffs, so I'm probably wrong. Well, so. I kind of hope that that's the case. Um, yeah. On the next one, I think we both might have a similar um, opinion. I think we do, but let's not let's not take away let's not take away from how good the eagles are actually as a team let's, let's people let's, are not really talking about them we're not talking about them let's get let's get into into this real quick uh, we still got a few minutes left um how good of a season do the eagles have i mean i don't know where they they came quiet out, yeah nobody's talking about them this nobody's year. really talked about them except for the i mean in the beginning everybody talked about them because they, you know they were undefeated for a little while right um you know everything was going really well case keenum was, uh, case keenum i'm sorry uh, carson wentz was playing right. out of his mount out of his mind um, they got uh, Alshon Jeffrey. Um, you know, they they picked up Jay Ajayi in the middle of the season. Right. Um, they made all the right moves. Their defense was playing well. Their offense was you know crisp. And look, I get it. They don't have their quarterback. Right. But you know what? The Vikings don't have their quarterback either. They have enough to win. They have enough to win. They, they have enough, enough weapons. And let's for, let's not forget that they're going to be at home. Also, yeah. they're going to be at home. This crowd's going to be nuts. Going uh, absolutely crazy. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I'm sure Carson Wentz would love to be in that position. I, mean, I feel. Bad for him. I kind do. Of. I do. No, I do. I know. I know. You're. 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 You probably feel less but, bad for him than I do. But. But I don't know. You know. You feel like they're the team of destiny. The Vikings after what happened last week. Like, oh god, this team after that play. But also, you feel like okay, maybe they got really lucky and they're not supposed to be there in the in the Super Bowl. But I don't, I don't know. I'm going with. I'm going with the better team. I think slightly 
better team in the Vikings. I think Case Keenum's going to have a better game this okay. week. Not, I don't think he's going to have an amazing game. I think they're going to rely a lot on their running game. We're going to see how they're on their running game and their defense. It's going to be a defensive battle. Do you see a shootout in this game? No, I don't. I don't see a shootout. Uh, my, my prediction is Vikings 17, Eagles 14. That's exactly where I was going to go. 17-14. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really I feel it. You know, I feel it. It's going to be it's going to be a low-scoring game. Uh, Last look, second field goal. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's going to come down to the end. Um it, these teams are going to play they're going to be locked in a really good defensive battle. And in all honesty, man, I can't wait to see it. And these are two teams, I, I believe. The Eagles have never won a Super Bowl. No, the Vikings never either have. have never won a Super Bowl. Uh, I believe that they haven't. I, I, I don't know. I think they won championships. I'm not sure. I don't I believe that they have never won a Super Bowl the Vikings. They, they might not have. I don't think they have. And you know what? So it's two teams. Yeah. Either way, it's... And the Jaguars definitely haven't won a Super Bowl. Right. You know, either way, <laughs> it's either a team that has... That, wow. You, know, you have the Patriots with five, and then all the rest of the teams with zero. Yeah, I, I, and it's crazy, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's But we want to see one of those teams win. I, I do. It's time. I really You're right. Do. It is. It's time but, to get somebody new. But Viking, you have Vikings-Jags. I have Vikings-Patriots. You know what? Either way, I, I, you know, it's going to be a good Super Bowl. It is. It is. It, even, way. And even if, even if the Eagles make it against either team, too, it's going to be a good Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, if Carson Wentz was playing, I would have a much different position on what, you know, what we were going to, you know, what I'd be saying right now. But it's crazy. It's crazy. But either way, we're going we're gonna to watch the games. We're going to watch the Super Bowl. We're going to see next week who's going to be in it. Oh, I agree. And I now, mean, um, one last time, we want to hear that amazing sound. From the Vikings yeah, game see. yesterday from the radio broadcast. Let, let's run that one more time. Run out of bounds or yep. run it off the back of the end zone. I mean, yep. wow. Oh, crap. Just we a lost. big, big mistake. Uh, you just got to be able to – you got to take advantage of it when they do that kind of stuff. Ten seconds to go. 24-23 Saints. Vikings at their own 39. It's third down. Three receivers right, feel and left. Marshawn Lattimore, 12 yards from Adam. I'm anticipating Case on it, and I love drop, it. Yeah. Steps up They're like, oh, crap, we lost. He'll fire to the right it's over. side. Caught by Diggs. Stay up. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. 30. No. 10. <coughs> Touchdown. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Finish. It's a Minneapolis no miracle. Way. Stephon Diggs <laughs> and the Minnesota oh, Vikings oh. have lost up on the New Orleans Saints. It's a 61-yard Miracle! Oh. I can't believe what I just saw, Paul. What an unbelievable play! Fans Step at US up. Bank Stadium are embracing each other. They're trying to climb into the box box to hug us all. Nobody can find <laughs> Stefan Diggs. He Nobody ran into the tunnel. Can find Stefan Diggs. Ball. Are you That's because me? Case Keenum tackled him. That's right. Stefan Diggs goes up, and Marcus Williams, the rookie. Tries to jump over the back of him to break up the throw. The ball is caught, and Diggs is able to take it into the end zone. Look at the Vikings so coaches. This is just right an absolute yes, yes, mistake. Yes. yes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So Can great. We're going to the bar tonight. Yes. I don't care. Drinks oh, on me. Yes. yes. Paul, when it's your year, it's your year. That's all I got to say. Let's Stephon go to Diggs, what an unbelievable play. It's going to be 48 and Grizzly. And we're bringing a purple rain. Yeah. Oh, Woo! I love that. Bringing the purple rain. I didn't heard that. That's oh, awesome. That, let me tell you gives something. Gives you chills, man. That is something that I, I would, I mean. I can not root for them after this. I I'm rooting for them. I, I, I so am rooting am I. for them. So am I. I, I want to see them go all the way, man. I really do. That it just gives you chills every time you hear it. Every time you hear it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, partner, it's been a great show. It has. Um, you know. We're going to have this. Next week, we don't know who's in the Super Bowl. I'm not going to be here next week. Oh, you're not going to be here next I'm week. I'm not going to be here okay. next week, guys. Okay. Um, uh, guys, I will be at the 25th anniversary of Monday Night Raw next week. So, unfortunately, like Avi left me when he, uh, unfortunately, I take I take a day. I will off try from to doing man the, the floor without you, and I appreciate that. I take, but I try to take a day off from doing the show, and I'll be in Brooklyn. You took a day off from doing the show. You were in Florida. Yeah, a little little difference. There. Yeah, a lot big of a difference. Um, I mean, hey, look, I'm gonna enjoy myself. I might come back, uh, you know, without a voice. So hopefully, I'll be good for the week after for a super for the Super Bowl preview that we have. But um. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the phone calls. Thank you for everything. Avi, I wish you nothing but luck next week. I hope to God that I can try to figure out a way to kind of listen for a little bit, but they start at the same time. It's going to be difficult. I'm going to try to figure it out. Yeah. But, um, you know, good luck next week. And, uh, I mean. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll get it done. Yeah. We, I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, next week we know. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, I will I will do something for you. I will send you at least a little something that you can read, you know, at least read over the radio for awesome. me. My my statement on on everything, what my prediction is, and then we can dig a little bit deeper next the week after. I'm just going to I'm just going to roll that tape the whole show. Not even say a word. Just the Viking. I'm going to roll that Vikings uh, call again. You know over what? Over and over. You know what? Maybe I can listen to that all maybe night. Maybe they'll do it again and you can just keep playing the, the two of them. <laughs> Man, I, I missed that. Bring in the purple rain. I love it. Beautiful. It was the, one of the best calls ever. Well, guys, this was the Opening Whistle Radio Show right here on MESNradio.com. Of course, if you want to hear anything uh, from Avi and I when it comes to the show, just go to Facebook.com slash The Slam Sessions Podcast Network. I'm Albert Albanese. I'm Avi Schiffman. And thank you guys for listening. We will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to the Opening Whistle Radio Show on MetzenRadio.com. For more information, go to Facebook.com slash The Slam Sessions Podcast Network. We'll see you next week.